Hi, this is Paul with a quick rundown on the changes in the next release of the Octane Render for Nuke plugin. So the first uh, major change is the Octane Reference Geometry node, um, which allows you to put uh, some uh, proxy uh, a proxy scene in there, uh, specify an Orbex or an OCS file as a proxy. That is now a Nuke 3D node, which means we can add a transform geo in between. So when we then start rendering that, so you see we've got Andy in the scene here. So this we can move the transform locator um, around the scene and Andy then moves. So that's really really pretty cool. So the other nice thing is that you can actually animate you, you can animate the translate as well so then when you render out the entire animation uh, your proxy moves around. So there's been also some changes uh, the way uh, information is stored on proxies uh, the reference scene geometry. So if I, I can edit the node graph for Andy there and when I'm editing that graph, you'll see this is what he this is the this is the octane scene for for Andy here. When I'm editing this graph, say I uh, change the color to something a bit brighter, right? So when I've when I've changed that color, then um, that that need that that gets stored in the uh, OCS file but you need to actually do a save on that so um, if I click save that's now saved that change back out to andy.ocs. We can also scatter um, a proxy octane reference geometry scene so you, there's a new option there to enter the scatter file so I will open something on my D drive so the scatter file uh, requires a restart of the render, which is fair enough. Um, and the actual scatter file itself can be exported from, for example, Modo. Um, I've added a new option in the Modo plugin to be able to extract that. So you can see I've, I've just got a sphere here with a bunch of different transforms. Um, if I disconnect that, you can see a bunch of Andes around the sphere there. So um, if you then change, if I go and re-export untitled.csv from Modo, then I can click the reload scatter and it will reload the scatter file again. So that's uh, really, really neat. And one of the other neat things that's been added is there's a new node called an Octane Material. So if we go back and disconnect Andy and just reconnect our card. So all we've got at the moment is a, um, a single card in the scene uh, on, on, the, on the ground there. So this Octane material, um, when we select it, we can edit the material graph for that material and then we can start to create all sorts of uh, uh, materials as you would in Octane standalone. So we might have a glossy, which is red, um, and we could add uh, some some noise to it. So we add marble. So etc. So um, you once this material, once that material, that no graph is closed and you save the scene, that Octane material is stored in the .nk file and to show you how that's stored, if we edit the Octane scene itself, you'll see that um, that card has a mesh and there's that Octane material there um, which represents this node here. So even if you rename it, um, it that will get carried over into the Octane scene. There's a couple of other small changes that have been made uh, for the purpose of uh, robustness. So for example, 
um, at the moment you can't save um, octane materials or the octane reference geometry octane nodes back to these nodes themselves they're actually stored um, in the octane render node here um, and that's done uh, for robustness um, there've also been a number of changes uh, behind the scenes regarding the uh, cache renders mode and that is now far more robust and doesn't get confused when you change the timeline so that's all working much smoother. And the final change is uh, one of the most important when you first load a scene um, it will not immediately start rendering um, so if you load a scene with an octane render node in it it will it the scene will start not rendered um, and then, so then you just double click that octane render node and click the start button up at the top of the viewer and that will start it rendering. Um, this was done because you might have a very very large scene which takes a while to load into your graphics card and when you load the scene you don't want it to automatically do that um, as soon as you load the, the scene. So um, all, all in all there's, there's quite a lot of really neat little uh, workflow improvements and there will be more to come. Thanks for listening.